Hello and welcome to the Tudor Cottage Diaries. My name is Heidi and I live here in this 16th century cottage. Today is about attacking a list that should be below in one of my short videos um, that I have set myself to achieve by spring 2025. And I'm not going to go in the order on the list because that's not seasonally correct. I don't know if you can see this, we have mismatched curves on the lawn. Now this has annoyed me for four years in that you sweep up onto the lawn here and here it's like a full stop. So what I'm going to do, and you can see that the ground's sloping away considerably here, is just to bring this round here and then I've got the perfect plants to go in there. Let me show you them. Firstly, look at the amount of acorns already dropping. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop in a video of some local pigs on just going onto the panage. Um, we came across them on the road um, yesterday when we took the dog for a longer walk away from where we live. Anyway, onto the plant. I have been after a witch hazel for probably four to five years. It's been on my wish list. And then um, I was given some money by a lady um, that used to live in this cottage. She gave me a 50 pound Dobby's voucher. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it there. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. I'll try and put some links in my bio. Anyway, this. This is Hammeranus Intermedia Pallida, which gives you that beautiful, fresh spring, zingy green yellow, which I wanted to go with the um, daffodil. Full of buds, and it's just going into its autumn colour now, so it will drop its leaves. These are deciduous, um, it's on a single stem. Um, for me, I think these plants are quite expensive. Um, this was from Dobby's. It's twenty nine ninety nine. Um, but how exciting! I'm also going to put two roses in the bed behind me. But I'm going to crack on and start digging that out. Hopefully you can see 
what I've marked out and I'll use the bricks to shape this. I'll probably go in a bit shallower this end. Right, I'm going to go and get something to put these sods in. Um, but I think that's going to look so much better. <laughs> Let's take a wander down. It's got a real autumnal feel to this morning. It's very damp. You can smell the rotting apples, which are here, and the plums. Right, have I got a truck? Let me rescue the truck. So, look at how full the compost bins are. It's been a year for chopping back this year. I don't know if you can pick up the sparkles on the thatch in the sunlight. It's one of my favourite things about the rain. Well, it's probably my only favourite thing about the rain, other than it means I don't have to hand water the garden, is that when it's on the thatch and it's sparkling, it looks beautiful. Right, I'm going to try not to procrastinate this morning. So, tab, let's get digging. So I'm here now, um, I've just led the bricks out so you can see, and now there's another irritating issue that the flagstone path is now not central in the curves, but I'm going to live with that for the moment because I do live in a cottage garden so surely I'm allowed some allowances for it being a bit wonky. I'm going to dig out some soil to go in here, but I think that this is a more welcoming entrance onto the lawn with the curves on both sides up onto the lawn. I think I'm going to put a layer of leaf mould in there. in first then come and get some compost I'm gonna leave you filming you can drop this in.
David Austin biodegradable rose bag. Certainly on its way. I think that's from this autumn. It's just gone. So autumn 23. Look what I found at the bottom. It's, it's got a leather thong, so I know this is a really, was a really good quality Joseph Bentley um, hand fork. Oh my gosh, probably gonna be in trouble. Hello. <laughs> so I'm really pleased with that so far. Um, I don't know if you can see it behind me. There we go. Just down there. Um, ready for the plants. I'm going to water it first because the subsoil was so dry. So dry. I think you might have seen it as I was digging it out. But I think that's going to add better symmetry to the garden. Let me show you. Yeah, I like that. Um, the bricks this side were new bricks, but I don't care, they're soon age and I'm short of about, I think we worked out 20 bricks for the garden, so whenever I find them, I dig them up mostly, I'll bring them here. Right, let's get the plants, the exciting bit. So, in its maturity, this plant will be 3 metres by 3 metres, which is huge, but uh, I will keep it trimmed. Um, but it needs something, so it needs to go back. So I'm going to push it back into that border. Let me show you, because I don't want it being the dominant plant, but I still need to smell it as we walk by. So it's going to... I'm going to sit back there, and then we'll get a couple of roses here. Forget me not some Virginia and some other little bits I've got around the garden. Right, I'm going to crack on. Keep the flavour on. Right, water.
job is looking for the forget-me-not seedlings around the garden and get them in the ground. Relocate these little buddies. Not that, that is a horrible buttercup. These are going in the side garden. Purposefully, I haven't really done anything with the pond this year. Um, one, we needed to cage it, but it has got to get ready for the garden open. Um, but can you see zillions upon zillions of forget-me-nots? Zillions of them. <laughs> I'm going to dig some of those up and get them in. There is also down here a um, azalea that's been resting down here and then can you remember I temporarily put in the fennel and the goras that's there they're going to move into the rose garden as I create space but first of all let's get these forget-me-nots so I very quickly just dug up one of these poor roses from my last video that wasn't doing very well and you can see how spindly it is but it has got good growth on it so I've chopped this stem back and there's an outward facing bud and a bud there and then here there's one there I think where I have a closer look at that and I'll get this chopped back and I believe this is a David Austin rose but I've lost the label for it um, so I'll have to have a route around where it was and see if I can find its copper tag just to keep you update with the plans, there is an arch going, follow my finger, there. We have archways leading onto the garden from all access paths. Um, so yeah, there will be a, a small arch there and that will probably have clematis on it. 